the Utah Valley Wolverines look to clinch the regular season championship in the Great West Conference as they take on the Bronx from Texas Pan Am. It's coming your way next right here on UBU TV. And welcome to the UCCU Center on the campus of beautiful Utah Valley University where tonight the Wolverines of Utah Valley look for their 20th win of the season as they take on the Bronx of the University of Texas Pan American. Hello again everybody, Jim McCullough along with Matt Peterson. Not only is it 20 games possible to win tonight, it's a 13 game winning streak on the line. It's also the Great West Conference regular season championship on the line. That's the biggest deal. Yeah, we got a lot of things going on tonight, Jim. I think the Wolverines are going to be well aware of those things. Most importantly, they got to keep their focus on the opponent that they're playing tonight. And all these things have been going really well for the Wolverines. They've got to yep. keep that going. And it starts with a victory tonight. The Wolverines are playing great, having won 12 in a row, their latest victory just two nights ago on this floor as they knocked off Houston Baptist. And uh, it was a pretty good performance by a lot of folks on the UVU team. Yeah, it was a game of runs. We talked about it in the halftime of that game. It was kind of going back and forth. But Wolverines in the second half, they were able to stretch the game out. We see a lot of good play here. Uh, Alfonso Hubbard with the dunk. It was, it was once again what we've seen so often from the Wolverines, and that's a total team effort. And defensively, they were just able to stretch that game out in the middle of the second half. So quick turnaround. Uh, to tonight's game. Yeah, Pan Am, though, they're coming in here having won four in a row, five out of the last six. Yeah, I mean, they're a very good team, and, and they're streaking at the moment that they need to be streaking, and that's, you know, closing out the season, heading into that tournament. So, you know, they've won those games on the road, as you said. Uh, excuse me, at home, as you said, going on the road is going to be a little bit more difficult for them. All right, these two have played once already. UVU beat them by eight at their place. Uh, key players you're looking for tonight that are going to be really dependent upon to, to pull the load. Yeah, for the Wolverines, these, these two players are a common theme. Isaiah Williams, a guard, he's a senior, averaging 15.7 points per game. And Ben Aird, you know, playing really good basketball, averaging 10.5 points per game. You know, we talked about it. He's played some really good basketball in the last couple weeks and the last couple games here. So these two players for the Wolverines will, will be very important for their team effort tonight. Meanwhile, for the Bronx of Texas Pan Am, they've got some horses inside as well. Provost averaging about 13 and a half points a game. Yeah, junior guard gets to the line. Very good free throw shooter at when he does get there as well as Jared Marie. He's a senior guard. He's going to be very experienced. We've seen him play before. 13.1 points per game on the season. So yeah, as the game progresses, these players from both sides, they're the key players for a reason, uh, and they're going to be the better players on the, on the team. Wolverines and Bronx coming your way. We're going to take a break. Back with more Costa Vida pregame show. It's senior night here. They're going to do a little special uh, something for the seniors for the UVU Wolverines. That's coming your way next right here on UVU TV. I'm Joe Luce, an anthropology student at UVU, and this is my classroom. At UVU, I'm sharpening my mind and my skills.
I'm Patty Garcia, a geology student at UVU, and this is Engaged Learning. At UVU, I'm learning by doing. Utah Valley looks to win their 20th game of the season. They're looking to win their 13th game in a row, but most important, they're looking to clinch the Great West Conference. They can do it all with a victory here tonight over the Bronx from Texas Pan Am. It's gonna be a heck of a night here at the UCCU Center. It's gonna be senior night. Five seniors for Utah Valley playing their very last home game for the Wolverines. Isaiah Williams, Holton Hunt, or excuse me, Isaiah Williams, Gettys Robinson, Keith Thompson, Rory Fannin, and Kevin Woods are the five seniors for Utah Valley. You remember your senior night, special night, wasn't it, it Matt was. Peterson? Yeah, they're, they're definitely going to honor them here. It was, you know, for the years that you've been here and for all the hard work and, uh, and effort that you put into to playing and practicing. So yeah, they're going to get rewarded for that tonight. And you know, excited to see them. I know they're going to be excited. A lot of times there's, there's parents, there's family that's here. So uh, it should be an exciting night for those five seniors. Utah Valley 8-0 in Great West Conference. They've got two games left, including tonight. One to go after tonight. Texas Pan American, their opponent tonight in second place. Two and a half games back. UVU 8-0, Texas Pan Am 5-2. So a victory tonight. Utah Valley would clinch. Even a loss tonight, though, by Utah Valley. And they've, they've already clinched a share of the championship. Pan Am is the only team that could tie them. Yeah, and you're, you're going to see the Wolverines take a lot of pride in this game, obviously. You, you're going to see them try to continue that winning streak that they're on. They've been playing some really good basketball. And, uh, you know, the, it should be a fun environment. A lot of people here. Uh, it's going to be a good game. All right, senior night. Tell you what, for the festivities, we're going to throw it to public address announcer Eric Allen. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome once again to the UCCU Center on the beautiful campus of Utah Valley University for tonight's matchup between the visiting Broncos of UTPA and our UVU Wolverines. Tonight is UCCU member night. We'd like to thank the members of Utah Community Credit Union for being with us tonight. And now, ladies and gentlemen, before tonight's game, we'd like to take a few moments to honor the five seniors on this year's roster. Please turn your attention to center court as UVU Director of Athletics Mike Jacobson will honor the players tonight on senior night. Please welcome to the floor Kevin Woods. Kevin is one of two senior players this year to have spent five years in the Utah Valley University program. He came to Orem in 2007 and was recruited out of Bloomington, Illinois and Chicago Leo Catholic High School. As a freshman in 2007, Wood set his career high with 15 points in a game against Cal State Northridge. After sitting out in the 2008-09 season due to injury, Wood's returned to start 14 games in the 2009-10 season and had a career year in assists and rebounds. Although Kevin has battled through injuries throughout his career, he still ranks in the top 10 in career games played at Utah Valley. Earlier this season, he scored a season high 10 points at Utah State and also set a new career high with eight assists and a win over Simpson University. He is joined tonight on the court by his father, Kevin Woods. From Bloomington, Illinois, senior guard number five, Kevin Woods. And now, please welcome to the floor, Rory Fannin. Our second senior tonight is from Auckland, New Zealand, native Rory Fannin. Fannin is the second UVU senior to have been in the program for five seasons. After coming to the States in 2007 and redshirting his first year in Orem, Rory has played four consecutive seasons and during his career has appeared in 98 games, which ranks in the top 10 in career games played at UVU. As a sophomore in 2009, Fannin started eight games and averaged career high in minutes played and set his career high with seven points and a win at Sacramento State. Last summer, entering his final season at Utah Valley, Rory had the opportunity to re represent not only his school, but was able to wear the colors of his native country, New Zealand, in the World University Games. This season, he has taken a leadership role and is having his best season statistically, setting his personal mark in points, rebounds, and field goal percentage. 
He is joined on the court by his former teammate Jordan Swarbrick and Jordan's wife Amber. From Milford, Auckland, New Zealand, senior center number 42, Rory Fannin. And now, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Keith Thompson. Keith is in his second season at Utah Valley University and prepping at Mayfair High School from after prepping at Mayfair High School in Lakewood, California and spending two seasons at Citrus College. After taking a role off the bench as a junior, Keith, Keith has been instrumental to UVU's winning streak and success in the 2011-12 season. Starting 27 games so far and averaging 9.2 points and four rebounds per game. He scored a career-high 18 points in a win over Seattle on January 13th and has twice matched career best with eight rebounds in two UVU wins. Also this season, Keith has made nearly 53% of his field goal attempts and ranks second on the team with 27 blocks, including a career-high four in Thursday's win over Houston Baptist. His athleticism has made him not only instrumental in this team's success, but also a crowd favorite. He is joined on the court by his mother, Sandra Lincoln, and his father, Keith Thompson. Ladies and gentlemen, from Bellflower, California, senior forward number 33, Keith Thompson. Next up, please welcome Gettys Robinson. Geddes will end his career as the most prolific rebounder in the program's NCAA Division I era. Geddes Robinson is in his second season at UVU after transferring from Western Nebraska. He holds the top two rebounding seasons in school history and earlier this season became the school's all-time leading rebounder. He is, his 10.1 re rebounds per game this season is the top average in school history, leads the Great West Conference and ranks 19th in the country. He, is also, he also matched a single game school record by hauling in 18 rebounds in a win over NJIT on January 28th. As a junior, Robinson was honorable mention all Great West Conference, setting a school record with nine double doubles, a mark he surpassed earlier this season. One of his double doubles came in a 12.15 rebound game at SEC Arkansas, earning him one of his three time Great West Conference Player of the Week awards, more than any other player in the league. Geddes also ranks among the program's all-time leaders in field goal percentage and has career averages of 9.2 points and 9.7 rebounds per game. Geddes, while your mom couldn't be here tonight, she wants you to know she's very proud of everything you've accomplished here at UVU. From Bronx, New York, senior forward number 15, Geddes Robinson. Our final, final senior tonight has the distinction of being the program's first All-American at the NCAA Division I level, Isaiah Williams. In his second season at UVU after transferring from Eastern Utah by way of Chicago, Isaiah was named the Great West Conference Player and Newcomer of the Year a season ago and earned honorable mention All-American honors from the Associated Press. Williams ranks third in many career and season scoring categories, trailing only Ronnie Price and Ryan Toulson in the school record books. He's scored more points than any other two-year player at UVU and is currently 22 points shy of becoming the fourth player to reach 1,000 points. He ranks third in career scoring average with 16.6 points per game, third in three-pointers made in a career, and third in career free, th free throw percentage. Isaiah was named the preseason player of the year in the Great West, and currently ranked second in scoring. He set a career high with 35 points at Oakland University earlier this season and dished out eight assists against Chattanooga. Isaiah, your mother said that although she can't be here tonight, she wants to let you know that she will be here for graduation in the spring and she loves you. From Chicago, Illinois, senior guard number two, Isaiah Williams. Ladies and gentlemen, your 2011-12 Utah Valley University seniors. And now fans, get your Minuteman Press rosters ready as we announce tonight's starting lineups. Minuteman Press is the first and last step in printing. First, the starting lineup for the visiting UTPA Bronx. At forward, number 11, Jared Marie. 
The other forward, number 23, Jesus Delgado. At center, number 15, Enik Mason. At guard, number three, Aaron Urbanos. And the other guard, number one, Brandon Provost. Head coach of the Bronx is Ryan Marks. Well, a little extended introductions, thanks to senior night. Five seniors on a team. Somewhat unusual to have that many seniors on a team at one time when you graduated five years ago how many seniors were in that class Matt do you remember I don't remember that was the last year by the way that UVU won 20 or more games you guys were what 23 and 22 and 7 22 and 7 very nicely done since then UVU's been pretty good they won 19 games last year went 19 and 11 right now they're sitting at 19 and 10 Texas Pan Am comes in here averaging 63 points a game Utah Valley averaging 70 points a game but it's the defenses that might tell the story tonight. The conference's top two scoring defenses going head to head in the form of Utah Valley and Texas Pan Am. And here comes your starting lineups for the Wolverines. UVU Wolverines. At forward, a 6'6 senior from Bellflower, California, number 33, Keith Thompson. The other forward, a 6'5 senior from Bronx, New York, number 15, Gettys Robinson. At senior, a 6'9 sophomore from Bountiful, Utah, number 34, Ben. At guard, a six-foot sophomore from North Salt Lake City, number 12, Fulton Hunsaker. And the other guard, a 6'1 senior from Chicago, Illinois, number two, Isaiah Williams. Head coach of the Wolverines is Dick Hunsaker. With assistants Mike Kelly, Steve Bain, Paul Moss, and Rob Goodrow. Isaiah Williams averaging 15.7 a game. He's number two in the Great West Conference. Holton Hunsaker averaging 10.4 a game. Geddes Robinson averaging 9.8 and 19th in the nation in rebounding at 10.1. Key Thompson averaging 9.2 a game. Ben Aird averaging 10.5 points a game. Wolverines have three players averaging double figures. And Geddes Robinson just, just a shade less than double figures at 9.8. So with all the hoopla out of the way, we're about ready to get this one cranked up here at the UCCU Center. Thanks for being with us. Should be a fun game to watch. Utah Valley and Texas Pan American. It was an eight point game the first time these two teams played back on February 2nd. That was at Pan American. A game that saw Utah Valley need a 14 nothing run midway through the second half to even pull away. Utah Valley trailed at halftime in that one. UVU controls the opening tip. We're underway here. Hunsaker over to KT inside Big Ben. Fakes once. Turn around, jump. Rolls around, won't go. And it's going to belong to Utah Valley. The first play of the game, very common play. We, we saw it a couple nights ago against Houston Baptist. Just a baseline screen, a, a nice screen set from uh, from Isaiah Williams, getting the getting the ball inside to Ben Air. Look for them to keep going back inside. UVU draws first blood. See what Pan American can do on their first possession. Delgado drives in, shot blocked by KT from behind. Keith Thompson coming off pretty impressive performance Thursday night where he blocked four shots. The team tied a record with 11 blocks on Thursday night. As your All-Americans first touch gives over to Hunsaker, misses the three, KT with a weak side rebound. And his first two. 
Yeah, nice, a good start here for the Wolverines. You, know, you get a, a, a nice inside basket from Ben Aird. You get a, a good look from the three-point line from Holton. And uh, what Keith does so well is crash that offensive rebound and keeps the ball alive, gives him another possession, and he finishes off that possession with the jumper. Marie has it. Slip down, gives it over for the jumper from Delgado for three. Here come the Wolverines back the other way. Hunsaker hesitates now, explodes, misses the layup. And the Bronx from Texas Pan American with possession. UVU at 4 0. Coming up on the two minute mark gone here in the first half. That's Urbanus, Aaron Urbanus. He'll put it up from anywhere on the court. Well, you see, just, right? Just like that. I mean, you see right there what his game is. He, he's looking to, you know, if he doesn't have a shot immediately, kind of read the defense and a nice move there. Quick, quick dribble and quick shot. Isaiah Williams down the lane, layup, good, and one. First foul in the game is going to go against Anik Mason. Yeah, you see the handoff there from Brand at the perimeter, and Isaiah, you know, probes for just a very quick second out on the perimeter, reads the defense, sees that he's got the lane, and you see how he doesn't shy away from the contact there. He goes into the body of Anik Mason, able to draw the foul, and most impressive part there was the, the left hand finish after the contact. Three different Wolverines have scored. And it's 7 2. Wolverines 12 in a row. They have won. Nation's fourth longest winning streak. Kentucky won today, so I think their winning streak's now at 20. Long jumper outside. No. Nope. Hunsaker coming down with it for UVU. Isaiah behind the NBA three line. Over it's going to settle it down here, run, run a certain play. Looks like they've drawn up previously. 12 on the shot clock. Geddes Robinson. He'll go in and be called for the charge. His first. Yeah, that was pretty good defense. Uh, the entire possession from Pan America. There you see uh, you know, Isaiah pass that ball inside, almost inside to Gettys there, and uh, tried to be aggressive going to the basket, but a nice charge there taken from uh, Marie. Delgado gives off to Provost. Provost, leading scorer for Texas Pan American on the season. Instead, it's going to be Urbanus with a jumper for three. Yeah, there was a nice screen that was set there. Uh, Anik Mason set the screen on Holton Hunsaker, wasn't able to get around it. There, there's Urban Urbanus, you know, as you said, Jim, he's going to be able to shoot it from anywhere and try to shoot it from anywhere. Thompson slapped away. Gettys recovers. Hunsaker off the screen, he'll take the long two. Green jerseys surrounding that rebound. So Texas Pan American look for their first tie or their first lead with a three here. Marie will put up the two. Nope. And Ben Air with a rebound for Utah Valley. Yeah, really good on the ball defense there from Gettys Robinson. Didn't allow the man to get around him and forced a shot, tough shot up and over him. Keith Thompson, nice job not to go up with that one. He does that move. We see that often. He tries to get that pump fake uh, up early. Little jump hook will not go. There's your offensive rebounder, Gettys Robinson, one of the best in the nation. He's number five in the nation in offensive rebounds, showing you why right there. Yeah, and when you get a double team on Ben Aird, Pan America came over and double teamed Ben Aird. And when you get that, you know, you're leaving yourself susceptible to those offensive rebounds. And Gettys put himself right in the, in the proper spot. And once again, a three from Urbanus. Urbanus had eight points in the first game between these two. He averages 8.6 a game. He's got five already tonight. No, make it eight now officially. He's got all eight of their points. Here you go. Front rim this time. Been there with a rebound. Isaiah shaking and bacon. Lost the handle, gathers it back in.
Isaiah Williams guarded by Provost. Instead of put it in the hands of point guard Holton Hudson, will set up the offense. Kicks out to Isaiah. Shot blocked. Provost got that one. T. Thompson recovers though, buries it. Wolverines by three. Yeah, a couple of good defensive possessions put there for Pan America. Keith Thompson in the right spot there. Able to convert uh, off of the almost turnover in the block shot. Provost puts up a three. And we are tied at 11. I think it's fair to say that the Broncos aren't going to be afraid to shoot those long three point shots from anywhere. The Wolverines perimeter defense hasn't been probably what they'd liked up to this point as the Bronx have got those uh, those three point shots off. Most importantly, they made them. Isaiah working hard against Provost. Big Ben drives in. No, but a charge going to be called on Ben Air. His first, team's second. 13.38 to play first half. We're tied at 11. Feel the need to pretend to have green feet. Well, it's totally real. Just because I'm different. I can see the magic marker in your pocket. <laughs> well, why don't we focus on ways that you can actually get green fever, like wanting hands-on experience or wanting a degree from UVU that will actually help you in the real world. I think Beverly's made some real progress today. See the replay here of uh, Ben Aird. I, I think that was a bad call seeing that replay. <laughs> you know, you, you're going to see Anik Mason still moving when he's coming over, still falling back. Now, I don't think that should have been an offensive foul on Ben Aird. So you have to shake that one off. And Partner, I don't think you've ever agreed with a whistle since yeah. we've been working together, have you? I, I don't think so. <laughs> it's uh, it's something I it, I tried you, to adjust to. You just learned to do that as a player? Yeah, I mean, when you see the replays like that, it, it's different than seeing it in live game action. But you see that replay there. I mean, like we said, uh, Neek Mason clearly still coming over to, uh, to Ben. I, I think that Ben should be at the free throw line, but you play on. 44% shooting so far for Texas Pan American. Jumper outside, Earl Jefferson. Wolverines come away with it to KT. Driving in, in traffic, a blocking foul going to be called. KT will shoot two this time. That foul is going to go against Nick Wiremiller. His first, team's second. See the replay here. Keith's going to be driving to the basket, forcing the action there. Going at uh, going at the defenders and does get the call. That's that's Keith. You know, that's what he does. He's aggressive. He's the slasher driver type. You know he does so many different things on the basketball court that a team needs to have. And you know that slasher driver is one of his traits. Keith Thompson, 59% free throw shooter on the season. On a team that averages 69%. Senior from Bellflower, California, misses them both. Rebound comes down to Texas Pan America. Still tied at 11. Six and change gone here in the first half. Watch how the Bronx try and spread that court out and create opportunities like that. And they've done that a couple times where they they get their players spread out around the perimeter, create lanes trying to drive uh, offensively here. See Isaiah trying to go up for the block, but gets a little bit of body there. But that's what they're trying to do. You see how there's no other Wolverine defender in the picture there initially. It's because they're so spread out. That, that creates that opportunity for you know three-point shots, for drives to the basket and kickouts, or for taking it all the way. Brandon Provost gives Texas Pan American their first lead in this game. 12-11. Provost the best free throw shooter for the Bronx. 82% on the season. And 
it's a two point lead. This game vaguely familiar to those who saw the matchup between these two just a couple of weeks ago down in Edinburgh, Texas. Neither team able to really break away from the other. Alfonso Hubbard inside scoring and one. Hubbard replacing Gettys Robinson during that last break in the action. Uh, that was a well executed play. You see the ball re eventually reverse around to Holton. You see that angle that Holton passed it in there. Nice job of improving his angle to get that ball inside. And the defender gambled, tried to go for the steal. Alfonso stayed his ground and uh, you know, gets the chance for the three point play. We see this so often with uh, the Wolverines play calls or what they're trying to do when Alfonso's in the game. You know, he has the size advantage and the strength advantage. They're getting him on that block and, and letting him create from there. Fons gives him a one point lead. UBU comes away with it. Isaiah working against Provost. This is shaping up to be a heck of a battle, these two. Yeah. You see Provost, a very good defender. He's got size, he's got length, already had that one block shot on Isaiah a little bit. So yeah, this will definitely be a tough mental challenge for Isaiah to create his own offense. A lot of teams get up for Isaiah Williams. Look at that, his own follow. Yeah, great initial defense there, Isaiah, with the tough initial shot, but looked like he knew exactly where that ball was coming off and with a, with a great finish. Isaiah Williams gives the Wolverines a three-point lead. Cabrera working against Ben Ayer. Little spin move, hesitation, kicks it out. Yeah, great defense there from Ben. Urbanus tries to go around Hunsaker. Holton will be called for the little hand check. His first. Team's fourth. 11.47 left, first half. Wolverines leading by three. Welcome to Utah Valley University, home to an educational philosophy that engages its students in hands-on, practical education. I invite you to learn more about one of Utah's largest, fastest growing, and most dynamic universities. Dawn is breaking at Utah Valley University. 33,000 students are descending on campus. What are they after? Knowledge? Opportunity? They might be pursuing an MBA, an automotive certificate, or a bachelor's degree in philosophy. But despite their different paths, they share a common understanding. See the replay here, Isaiah Williams. See, this is what I'm saying, good defense here initially, a tough shot, but Isaiah, as soon as he shoots that, watch him just slip through the two defenders here, knows right where that ball's coming off, and able to just follow it right up and finish. Haven't really seen that play from Isaiah before, but a great job of getting the offensive rebound. Isaiah has five points. Two players have scored for Texas Pan American. Urbanus has eight, Provost has five. So two stats that stick out to me, Jim, the, the Wolverines 10 points in the paint and 10 second chance points. So, you know, those, those second chance opportunities that they're getting, it's usually coming second chance scoring right inside. Yeah, five different players scoring for Utah Valley. Inside feed for the easy two from Cabrera. And a little bit of a breakdown there from the Wolverines. Looked like they had a little bit of a miscommunication as Cabrera was able to see that his man didn't have awareness and uh, cut right to the basket and was rewarded. Ben Ayer feeds inside. Isaiah working inside. Ball will not climb over the rim, but he'll shoot two. That foul's going to go against Delgado. Yeah, Isaiah, this was a design post play. Ben Aird's the passer, obviously, getting it inside. You see this defense come in and crowd Isaiah. I think they're calling that before the shot because they've got yep. the ball uh, underneath the basket. But you know, either way, Isaiah, a very skilled post player for his, you know, for being a guard. Not a shooting foul. Fourth team foul. Outside shot goes down for three. Too much space. He was given too much space there. 
he has such a quick release that any just that little itty bitty space he's able to to create and uh, no chance if you're not if you're not crowding him if you don't have a hand ready to challenge the shot officials called the timeout Ruben Cabrera needed to tie a shoe nice of the officials to stop playing yeah. for that. you don't see that often <laughs> they never did that for you didn't no, they? of course not wire Miller in the game Texas Pan Am coach Ryan Marks in his third season goes to his bench frequently. Yeah, good defense there from Isaiah Williams, not allowing that baseline drive. Marie misses the three, Ben Air with the rebound. Kevin Woods, senior, into the game, replacing Holton Hunsaker. Kevin injured a lot this season, hasn't seen as much playing time as I know he wanted to. Not nearly as much playing time as Coach Dick Hunsaker was hoping to get out of his senior. We're happy that it wasn't uh, anything more serious. Kevin's back out there, yeah, albeit in a limited role. Hunt Fawn's turnaround jumper is short. And the Bronx come away with it. Wolverines by four right now. About halfway done here in the first half. Marie drives in. Conference's six leading score gets it down. Just a two point lead now for Utah Valley. Yeah, Wolverines had a switch there as Ruben Cabrera came up to set the screen on Marie. Alfonso Hubbard wasn't able to get around, so Ben Aird helped over and switched on that screen. And, you know, Ben not the quickest, uh, the quickest player there on the perimeter guarding uh, Marie definitely had the advantage. KT for three. Missed it. Batted around. Fonz got it. Drives in. Scoop shot. Good and one. Alfonso Hubbard, his teammates call him Fonz. And he has done some amazing things around the glass this season. Yeah, you said it. You said the scoop shot. I mean, watch this. He sees where the arm is, takes that ball underneath the arm. A lot of times you're just tempted to try and go through the hand, but Alfonso, very nice, very heads, uh, heads up play there, being able to get that. Uh, get that shot off but you go back the Wolverines just adding to their totals of second chance points you know Ben Aird was the one uh, before that finish there from Alfonso who was able to tap the ball and keep it alive giving the Wolverines that second chance opportunity Ben Aird's going to get a breather Gettys Robinson replaces him Ryan Marks counters with about three fresh Texas Pan American players 22-17 Both teams shooting right at 47% here in this first half. Provost gives over to Delgado. KT went for the steal, missed it. Jumper, Maury, he missed it. Kevin Woods. KT drives. Shot, bouncing, won't go. Texas Pan American. Alley oop, little too much alley on the oop, and the Wolverines come away with that one. Yeah, force a force pass there from Nick Wiremiller. Wolverines, nice job of getting back defensively, not allowing anything easy. Kenny's Robinson going to be called for the travel, but that was an amazing effort to get that ball up and off the glass. Threw that up as he was falling down. See the replay here if we able to see if he truly did shuffle his feet. But nonetheless, yeah, as you said, Jim, a pretty amazing finish there as he's falling to the ground. 22-17 with eight and a half to play. First half. We're in Orem, Utah. The Wolverines win this one. They are the Great West Conference regular season champions. Urbanus lit them up early. He's got eight points. Gives off inside and blocked from behind. Cleveland went up. Here come the Wolverines. Isaiah Williams. Incredible defensive effort there from Gettys Robinson. You know, he came over to help on the on the penetration. He came over, helped stop the penetration. The ball was dished off, and then he was able to recover with the block. That was an incredible play, and Isaiah finishes it off. Wolverines by seven now. Urbanus. There's another rebound by the all-time rebounding leader here at Utah Valley, Gettys Robinson. Defense, 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 defense,
Isaiah got the hot hand. Provost thought he had the block. Isaiah, oh, in and out. Shooters are going to shoot. Yeah, and you're going to use your, your pump fakes, your, your dribble fakes. You're going to use the subtleties of the game to get you open, and that's exactly what happened there. And Gettys Robinson with a nice steal. He's going to run the break. Gettys Robinson fakes it left, goes right. Kevin Woods wide open. There you go. Senior night, and the senior comes off the bench and buries his first jumper. Yeah, it's not often you see your power forward running the break like that. What was most impressive there, you see him pull up short. Urbanus had stopped to take a charge. Getty saw that, pulled up, didn't run into Urbanus. Nice dish off and a great great shot from Kevin Woods. It's a seven nothing run right now for UVU. Yet another rebound for Gettys Robinson. For Gettys, five rebounds, two points. Leading rebounder in the game. Isaiah's got 10 points, only player for either team in double figures. Urbanus had eight for Texas Pan American, all of them coming early. Geddes. I'm going to call that one against Texas Pan American's Josh Cleveland. That'll bring us to a timeout. Wolverines leading by nine. Welcome to Utah Valley University home to an educational philosophy that engages its students in hands-on, practical education. I invite you to learn more about one of Utah's largest, fastest-growing, and most dynamic universities. Dawn is breaking at Utah Valley University. 33,000 students are descending on campus. What are they after? Knowledge? Opportunity? They might be pursuing an MBA, an automotive certificate, or a bachelor's degree in philosophy. But despite their different paths, they share a common understanding. Highlights here of Isaiah Williams so far in this game. He's come out ready to play on senior night already with 10 points. You see the variety and the creativity that he has in scoring. Has a, a myriad of ways that he can score offensively. You see taking it to the basket, pull up jump shots, post up game. Isaiah able to create in a number of different ways. 10 points, two rebounds, four of seven shooting from the floor front. Last year's All-American, the first All-American in the history of Utah Valley University. Playing his last game for Utah Valley here at home. Wolverines on the road a week from today at North Dakota to close out the regular season, and then we'll be in Chicago. Isaiah Williams, hometown for the Great West Conference Tournament. I think Mama and a whole bunch of other people are going to be there to watch their All-American. Yeah, it's going to be close to, to Kevin Woods' home as well. I imagine he'll have some uh, oh, yeah. some family and friends there as well. So I'm sure that they're very excited about that. Well, Reeves may have a bigger crowd in Chicago than they do tonight. <laughs> Kevin Woods over to Isaiah. Here you go. Lighten it up, baby. Yeah, a couple really good screens set. I, I think it was Gettys who set that initial screen, and then Keith was the one who came to clean it up on the on the second leg of the screen, and Isaiah had uh, had a lot of room and took his time, knocked it down. Delgado starts to drive. Foul's going to go against Utah Valley's. That one's going to go Hubbard. Yeah, this is going to be a key for the Wolverines defensively against the Bronx here. And we talked about them spreading it out. This perimeter defense against the drive. You see how much space they're trying to give. Yeah, tough play there for uh, for Alfonso. Did get called for the foul, but it's going to be a theme. That spread, that dribble drive, and penetration. How are Wolverines going to defend it? They've done a pretty good job so far. Marie gives off to Urbanus. Urbanus will take a long three. KT with a rebound. Yeah, they've cooled off quite a bit here. Now they're uh, three of ten from the three-point line. That's what got them that early lead. And initially on got them some easy points was those three point shots but the Wolverines have cooled them off driving inside nice move from Delgado that stops a 10 nothing Wolverine run a 
and draws Texas Pan American to within 10. Five minutes left in this first half. Woods with the lob to Gettys Robinson. Backing in. Twisting. Turning. And just like perimeter players have shot fakes and foot fakes and leg fakes that they use, post players have moves as well, and Gettys perfect display of that right there. Alley oop. KT couldn't get it. Follow one go. Keith Thompson can't get it down. All right. Wolverines patting their offensive rebound stats there. Number of different <laughs> opportunities. Every time a shot is taken, there is a rebound awarded to somebody, and that time the Wolverines had two of three of them. Gettys kicks it outside to KT. 15 on the shot clock. Inside Gettys Robinson. That one, look at that thing. Just, that was Dairy Queen. All around good. Gettys Robinson. You think these seniors were fired up for this? Yeah, they're very excited. I mean, you can see everybody who's in the game. And you know what? I remember a lot of times when, you know, my, my years of playing here, we went through a lot of different senior days, and Coach Hunsaker would put a, put a good emphasis on that this game was about the seniors and was for the seniors, and, you know, talked a little bit about that because it is their last home game. And as I kind of said in the pregame, all, all the work, all the time, the, the practice time, the, you know, conditioning, the weight room, everything that you go through, you know, really leads to this moment. And, yeah, exactly. Everybody who's put, been playing, you know, has that in their mind, and, and especially the seniors have played have played fantastic so far tonight. As we see the the replay here of Gettys, and you know, season, one, two, season, three. I'm yeah. trying to count how many times that ball went around. Yeah, you see the the defender come over, Jesus Delgado, and you see right when Gettys noticed that he was able to make a quick turn to his left uh, uh, left shoulder, and by that time he had backed himself down in a position where he was not too far away from the rim. So nice read of the defense there and a nice uh, right hand shot. I counted either four or five. 33-19. Under four minutes left here until the break. Hanging jumper by Provost won't go. Fonz with the rebound. Utah Valley just scoring on the boards. 22 rebounds compared to Pan Am's. Eight. Urbanus can't get it. But nice hustle by Cabrera to track it down. Yeah, Urbanus got a good look there. He's cooled off too, as their whole team has. A little bit of a breakdown for the Wolverines in their transition defense and not being a transition defense usually leads to an offensive rebound off of a long shot also. Cabrera gives over to Provost. Ten seconds on the shot clock. Provost takes it in. Cannot get it down. Gettys Robinson with a rebound. Isaiah Williams. Isaiah now five of nine from the floor. He's got 13 points. Coach Ryan Marks jumps up and tells his Bronx, let's slow it down just a little bit. Two and a half to play. 33-19. Murray gives over to Cabrera. He'll take the three. He's the last player you would expect to take the three-point shot there, but they eventually work that ball around a couple shot fakes from the, the perimeter players for the Bronx. And Cabrera able to knock down the three-pointer. That was a much-needed basket for them. They, they had been struggling and have been struggling, so that was much needed. Cabrera, big kid, six foot seven. Isaiah called a little, little, little too much that time, being called for the travel. Time out on the floor. Final break before half. Wolverines out in front. Welcome to Utah Valley University, home to an educational philosophy that engages its students in hands-on, practical education.
I invite you to learn more about one of Utah's largest, fastest growing, and most dynamic universities. Robinson, six points, six rebounds, a block, two steals. And yeah, doing a lot of good things, gets the offensive rebound there. That's the one where he was called to, for the travel, falling to the ground, but there's that post move, that uh, right hand jump shot. Doing a lot of really good things, as you said, six points, six rebounds. He's definitely having an impact on tonight's game. 33 22. Wolverines by 11. They've led by as many as 14 here in this first half. Texas Pan American's biggest lead has been just two. And a foul going to be called against Utah Valley. Second foul against Holton Hunsaker. Teams six. Both teams being whistled for six here. Kevin Woods comes in. I think we've seen the last of Holton Hunsaker here in this first half. Yeah, has those two fouls. You know, I had mentioned before that Ruben Cabrera, you probably wouldn't expect him as you're going to see the foul there. Ah, tough call there. I mean, Holton's just trying to kind of get around that. That that would have been a call, in my opinion, just let that one go. But uh, as I was saying, Ruben Cabrera has shot 44 threes on the year, so Wolverines have to know that that he uh, is going to attempt it or be willing to attempt it. Urbanus attempting the baseline drive. Ball went out of bounds off a Utah Valley player. That makes two disagreements that I've had tonight, right? Well, that one you just at least said it was a no call. How about this one? Wow. Yeah. Inbounds play will not go down. That's because Isaiah Williams is going to be called for his second personal foul on that inbounds play that Texas Pan American just tried to run. Yeah, you see that so often. I, mean, I remember that play. So many teams try and run that where they get most of the players overloaded onto one side and they get the inbounder and they just put one guy in the middle of the paint. And what they do is just lob that ball up. And you see Brandon Provost, we talked about the size that he has and the length. And Isaiah has a well, not as tall as, as Brandon Provost. So what they try and do is just throw that ball up, lob it up into the middle of the paint. The defender's at a disadvantage because you know, the offensive player knows when it's coming. So they just throw that ball up, let the player go up and get it. And it's very hard to defend. I've been a victim of being scored on that many times. So I know what Isaiah <laughs> feels like there. Provost brings Texas Pan Am to within nine. It's a little five nothing spurt right now for the Bronx. Buck 15 left, first half. Kevin Woods tries to feed inside, ball slapped away. Wow. Nobody understands what that call was, but think, it's going to go to Utah Valley. I think they're going to say that Urbanus was out of bounds after that ball was deflected and kind of ping ponged around there in the middle. And I think the officials are coming over here and they may want to ask for a replay. Well, the, cl the call was clearly that Urbanus was out of bounds, right? When he had the ball, I think they. They were saying that he had stepped out of bounds or was out of bounds and maybe hadn't come back in and fully established himself. But he definitely was shocked at that call. And I think we were as well. We didn't see it. So maybe we'll get a replay and see exactly what uh, what took place. And this may be a first that Matt Peterson, my broadcast partner, agrees with an official. Wow, he's not even close yeah, to I, I, Yeah, I don't think that that was. But yeah, he, he was. He, he was close to the end line. He was out of bounds. But then he came back in. Uh, it's almost like an NFL rule they're yeah. calling here. That other, that first replay that we had was the best replay uh, that we had. But yeah, the call stands. Wow. Wolverine basketball. A minute left. First half, they lead it by nine. Ben Air, somewhat quiet first half. Little jump hook, can't get it to go. Gettys Robinson, offensive rebound. 
calls a timeout. There's a smart senior right there. Yeah, nice play. Realized that you got the possession, you've got the ball. They're gonna Wolverines are gonna have seven seconds on the shot clock when they come back. But as you said, very heady play there. Isaiah Williams, 13 points. Gettys Robinson, six points. Alfonso Hubbard off the bench, six points. Keith Thompson, four. Kevin Woods, two. Ben Aird, two. Nobody else has scored. Wolverines have had uh, Holton Hunsaker in there running point guard. And he's done a good job dishing out two assists, picking up three rebounds. Scoreless, though. Taylor Brown saw some action, has a score. For Texas Pan American, Urbana is still their leading scorer with eight. Most of those were very early in the game. Like within the first two, three minutes, wasn't yeah, it? He, he had all eight of their first yeah. point, yeah. Or first eight, yeah. Brandon Provost got seven. And uh, Ruben Cabrera with five, a couple other players with two each. Yeah, watch this out of bounds play. You've got Ben and Geddes right in the middle. See if they do any type of screening for one another. Just a duck in there for Geddes trying to do a high low. Five seconds to shoot. Geddes Robinson. Yeah, that's, that's a great play. Great pass for Ben Ayer. Great job of Geddes Robinson sealing his man off. Ben has that luxury of just throwing that ball up, knowing Geddes is going to go get it. Last 30 seconds here of this first half. Urbanis. Kid is quick. Dishes off to Murray. Ben Ayer with the rebound. Yeah, Shot the clock on. Yes, a break there for, for UVU because they got that switch once again. You know, Ben did a nice job of not allowing Urbanis get all the way around him. You know, use that baseline as another defender for him. But uh, there was that switch off again for the Wolverines. Seven seconds. Woods hanging jumper. Good. <laughs> Kevin Woods. Showing what the Wolverines have missed most of this season when he's been out with knee injuries. So we send him to the locker room. Wolverines by 13 points, 37 to 24. Very impressive first half. Yeah, I think it, it, from the start, you know, the, the Wolverines have uh, have played some really good basketball. They've done a nice job defensively, and you know, you get these seniors. It's senior night. The seniors have played spectacularly. Back with our halftime show after this. You're watching UBU Television. Sylvia Bentley, an anthropology student at UVU studying ancient Peru, and this is my classroom. At UVU, I'm graduating with a diploma and a resume. to Utah Valley University, home to an educational philosophy that engages its students in hands-on, practical education. I invite you to learn more about one of Utah's largest, fastest growing, and most dynamic universities. Halftime at the UCCU Center here in Orem, Utah. Utah Valley looking for their 13th consecutive win. It's already the nation's, what, fourth longest winning streak. Yep. They might even climb up, climb up a little bit higher than that. UVU also uh, looking to clinch the Great West Conference regular season championship with a win. Uh, your thoughts on the first half? Yeah, good first half. 
I mean, they, they really calmed themselves down defensively after a quick start there from UTPA. But you know, I look forward for the Wolverines to go in, make some adjustments. You know, that's when those adjustments get made. And I just thought an overall, everybody who played contributed, and everybody who played came in with a lot of energy, and that's what you need in a game like this. Especially the senior, senior night here at Utah Valley. Five seniors, you know, we really ought to pay them a little bit of a tribute. Let's take a look at uh, some of the highlights throughout the season from these five seniors. First of all, Rory Fannin, a senior from Auckland, New Zealand. You know, he hasn't seen a lot of playing time. That's because he's stuck behind somebody like uh, Ben Aird. But Rory, when he's in there, the 6'9 senior has just done an amazing job twice this season. I know Rory Fannin has been given game balls after the game by Coach Dick Hunsaker. He's just really happy with the minutes that he has gotten from Rory Fannin. Rory from Milford, Auckland, New Zealand. And uh, just has done a wonderful job. Then, of course, you've got Gettys Robinson. What can you say about Gettys Robinson? Averaging almost a double-double all season long. He's 19th in the nation in rebounding at 10.1. He's fifth in the nation in offensive rebounding right now. Only four players out of 4,500 kids playing D1 basketball have pulled down more offensive rebounds than has Gettys Robinson just doing a phenomenal job. Then you got Keith Thompson, the senior from Bellflower, California. KT getting the start this season has just done a remarkable job, averaging nine points a game. And you know, he transferred here from Citrus College. Uh, while there, his team was 57 and eight over two years. He's come here, he's Coach Hunsaker has called him the most athletic player. He's coached here perhaps ever at UVU. And when you figure Ronnie Price into that mix, that is high praise for Keith Thompson, the senior from Bellflower, California. He's going to be one of the five guys who really missed next year as the Wolverines are going to lose all five of these guys. And talk about it, a miss next year. All-American Isaiah Williams. Last year, he averaged almost 20 points a game. This year, defenses are all over Isaiah, and he's still averaging right at 16 points a game. He's just 22 points shy of scoring 1,000 here at UVU from Chicago, played at Farragut High School. It's a tough place to play. He did great in high school. He transferred here from Eastern, uh, Eastern Utah. He's just done an amazing job. And then, of course, Kevin Woods, the fifth senior on this team, leaving. He's from Bloomington, Illinois. Kevin just averaging 2.3 this season, and that's because, his, as we've mentioned several times during the first half, uh, he was just limited by uh, knee injuries. He thought he might have to have surgery, but the doctor did a great job in getting him back onto the court. And he's gotten some action tonight. And it's really good to see Kevin being able to finish out his senior year with some action here on senior night. So Isaiah Williams, Kevin Woods, Gettys Robinson, Keith Thompson, and Rory Fannin, five seniors who will really be missed for these Wolverines next year. Yeah, great. You know, we see a lot of these highlight reels, and, and we're so impressed by them. It's also the little things that they do during games that, that make them so fun to watch. We'll be back. More of your halftime show. We'll update the stats and get you some highlights, too. You're watching Wolverine Basketball on UVU TV. Come join the student section and cheer for the Mighty Wolverines. Mighty Athletic Wolverine League sports passes are now available. Your mall pass gets you tickets to every NCAA home game, free food at the tailgate parties, prizes at the games, and lots of new friends. Get more information on their Facebook page or by calling Campus Connection at 801-863-8797. Go UVU! If you're serious about going to college and getting a head start on the process, come get a feel for what university life is like. UVU Days are designed with you in mind. UVU Days are department-specific events held on Saturdays that will allow you to become a student for a day. These events are free and breakfast and lunch are served. For more information, dates, and times, please visit our website at www.uvu.edu forward slash future students. Come experience what UVU has to offer in your field of study. Well, I guess I really got green fever when, like, I found out how Utah Valley University can get me great education. Are you here for zombies? This is green fever. Zombies meets down the hall, room 1023. <laughs> Go 
Coast of Vida was born on the beach. So the coast inspires how we prepare everything from our crisp salads to our irresistible burritos. And with more fresh sauces and salsas to choose from, meals at Costa Vida are truly a custom experience. Costa Vida, the coast is calling. Back at the UCCU Center, the Wolverines out in front of the Bronx of Texas Pan American, 37-24. Wolverines shot 46% in the first half, Texas Pan American. 33%. Your thoughts uh, and uh, looking at the score sheet from the first half. Yeah, a couple of things that really stick out to me, you know, as we see these here. Wolverine 16 of 25 from the field, 40% from the free throw line, excuse me, the three point line. Both teams only with uh, four turnovers, but what really sticks out to me is the defense that the Wolverines have played, holding the Bronx to eight of 24 from the field, 33% after that really hard, uh, hot, hot start that they got out to. Uh, also, the Wolverines 25 rebounds to 11 for the Bronx. Yeah, that's huge. Yeah, 10 offensive rebounds as well. Uh, the Wolverines have 20 points in the paint, and this one is really telling. 17 second chance points for UVU and none for the Bronx. So uh, you know, Wolverines playing really well. They're, they're doing a great job. They, they haven't taken a lot of threes, only five threes in that first half, which is a little bit unusual, but they've got great shots in other areas of the game. Isaiah Williams having a heck of a first half, 13 points. And the Wolverines were doing it on the boards inside uh, and you, outside. Yeah, I mean, the, the Wolverines are getting good shots. They're, they're running their offense. And with that winning streak that they have, you know they're playing with a lot of confidence. You haven't seen a lot of things forced. You've seen a lot of things that being patient, taking shots, taking opportunities that are there that they have. You know, they've just done a nice job here in that first half, but you know, that the defense event, you know, we don't see any highlights. It, you know, you never see highlights on Sports Center or defense unless it's a really emphatic block. But you know, it's the little types of defense that the Wolverines have done that I think has really got them this lead that they have. And you know, these offensive uh, offensive highlights are are obviously what you need and what the Wolverines have had. But you know, that defense that they played has been impressive also. Yeah, if you joined us late, it was a pretty interesting first half. Wolverines jumped out quickly, seven to two, and Texas Pan Am fought their way back to lead by two at 13 to 11. And Wolverines had a two-point lead at 19-17 when they went on a 14 to two run to lead at 33-19, and here we are at halftime with the Wolverines leading 37 to 24, a 13-point lead for UVU. By the way, Utah Valley, pretty doggone good at winning games when they lead at halftime. In fact, uh, they've only lost once all season, 13 and one when they lead at halftime. They've got the lead here at halftime. We'll take another break. Back with your second half of action coming up live from the UCCU Center. Welcome to Utah Valley University, home to an educational philosophy that engages its students in hands-on, practical education. I invite you to learn more about one of Utah's largest, fastest growing, and most dynamic universities. section and cheer for the mighty wolverines mighty athletic wolverine lead sports passes are now available your mall pass gets you tickets to every ncaa home game free food at the tailgate parties prizes at the games and lots of new friends get more information on their facebook page or by calling campus connection at 801-863-8797 go uvu Utah Valley looking to 
clinch the regular season Great West Conference Championship with a victory here tonight. They do have one game left after tonight in conference play. UVU 8 and 0, Texas Pan American two and a half games behind them. We saw the graphic there briefly, and of course we'd much rather see that than the graphic. But Texas Pan American five and two. So with a win here, UVU clinches. Even with a loss, UVU would be eight and one. And Texas Pan Am six and two. Texas Pan Am goes to play North Dakota on Monday night. So even if UVU lost this game, they could still clinch if Pan American lost to North Dakota on Monday night. But the easiest thing to do is just win it outright. Yeah, the Wolverines have definitely got that got that on their minds. Yeah, this is a big game. We, we've talked about how, what this means for the Wolverines, but, but this is also a very big game for UTPA. I mean, you see they're currently sure. second. You know, they've got some games left, so this is not only a big game for UVU, but also for uh, for the Bronx, which you know, makes this game more important and, uh, and what the Wolverines have done. And you saw the sign there, 13 straight if they win tonight. It is currently the nation's fourth longest winning streak at 12 straight games. It is a school record in UVU. Just uh, hasn't lost since they lost on this floor January 3rd to Wyoming. And that was a game that UVU was pretty upset that they lost. They lost by six on a very controversial call near the end. Uh, otherwise, it'd be already 13 games. But sometimes a loss like that can propel a team to, to better things. And it yeah. looks like that's what happened. Well, and if you, if you follow and if you see what Wyoming's done on the year, they've been an incredible team on the year. And so that's not like the Wolverines came in and, and you know got blown out in that game. That was a close game, as you said. So uh, Wolverines playing awesome basketball. I mean, just it's it's really fun to watch. Uh, just they're they're always prepared. They're always ready to play. And uh, it says a lot when you have a 13 game winning streak like that and when you put yourself kind of into the national news or national spotlight so to speak with uh, you know, when you're competing win streak wise versus other teams nationwide. And let's not overlook head coach Ryan Marks doing a great job at Texas Pan American. They've won four straight coming in here five of their last six actually their only loss in their last six games Utah Valley. Yeah. About ready to start our second half Wolverines leading by 13 it's 37 24. And we told you in the pregame show this was the conference's top two scoring defenses going head to head. Texas Pan Am giving up 68 points a game, but UVU only giving up 66 points a game. Right now, both teams are pretty much on track for that, but uh, UVU's done a better job, at least offensively. Yep, that's uh, it's definitely been the case. And you'll see what, uh, see what, if any adjustments are made, what motivation's given at the, at the halftime. And uh, well, we've got 20 minutes of basketball left. It's going to be exciting. Just 33% shooting for Texas Pan American in that first half. They have got to get a little warmer than that here in the second half. They're going to climb back into this thing. It's easier said than done as Utah Valley, one of the best in the nation against three point shooters. But that time, Marie just takes the two and buries. And yeah, that's something we didn't really mention, Jim. Uh, you've got Brandon Provost and Jared Marie both average 13 points on the year. So we see Marie there jumping into the passing lane, but uh, Brandon Provost, Jared Marie average 13 points uh, per game on the year. In that first half, they were each held to two points. So you know, that's why maybe the Bronx struggled offensively. So look for Jared Marie and Brandon Provost to be extra aggressive here in the second half. Keith Thompson kicks it out to Isaiah Williams. Baseline drive, spins. Ten seconds to shoot. Hunsaker looking inside, gives over to Isaiah. Inside to Gettys now, slapped away. Force, needs to force it up, jump hook, won't go. Gets his own rebound. Goes back up and is fouled this time. Unique Mason, I believe, is going to be the one called for the foul. You know, if you're a defender there, you're just shaking your head because you, you play pretty good defense. You know, Gettys gets the ball. This is off of the offensive rebound he had, but you force a tough shot. Gettys just follows his shot, gets the ball back, and you know, tries to go through the defender and gets fouled. But you know, your defense there, you're just shaking your head because that's an incredible individual effort. Gettys Robinson's first trip to the stripe tonight. First one bounces around, drops through good. Wolverines by 12. Season Gettys just a 50% free throw shooter. He'll be the first one to tell you there is a, uh, a dent in the armor. It's his free throw shooting, but there you go. He makes them both. 
as you would expect a senior to on senior night. Absolutely, things are going well. This will be a key matchup. We, we know what a good uh, on-ball defender is, uh, what a good on-ball defender Holt Hunsaker is. He's going to have that task of chasing around Urbanis. Way outside, jump shot won't go for Delgado. Ben Ayer pulls down the rebound. Ayer's got five boards now. Gettys, spin move, trying to go around Marie. Gettys is fast. Marie called for the foul, his first, team's second here in the second half. Coach Dick Hunsager told me privately on our, one of our road trips a couple weeks ago, he said, you know, you haven't seen Gettys Robinson at his best yet. Which is pretty scary. That's yeah, pretty hard to believe, too, yeah. because we've seen him be really, really good. Foul on the inbounds play against Murray. He picks up number two very quickly, and that's going to put Gettys Robinson at the free throw line again. With the Wolverines already out in front by 13. A minute and a half gone here, second half. And uh, yeah, did we mention Gettys was a 50% yeah. free throw shooter? Sorry, Mrs. Robinson. I'm going to hear about that when we get to Chicago. <laughs> well, if he makes this one, that's going to put him above that mark. There we go. There you go. 75% tonight. Wolverines by 14. Urbanis gives over to Provost. Working against Isaiah Williams. Heck of a matchup in the first half. Now Gettys takes the guard on Provost. The dish. Nice assist. The finish from Mason. Yeah, good tr good drive there for Provost. Good aggressive drive. Great initial defense from the interior players, but uh, just a dish off there at the last moment. Hunsaker feeds inside to Ben. Stolen away. Stripped. Here comes Delgado working against Hunsaker. Lost the handle. And Isaiah comes up with the steal. Yeah, great defense there in transition. Can't play that any better than Holden did. He got back. He didn't try and pressure the defender. Holt held his ground, made the defender go through him, and a great transition defense there from Holt. Holton Hunsaker, despite a few games where he's been held at very few points, does the intangible things that just help a team win. He's a phenomenal point guard. Yeah, I mean, he's the point guard. You know, he's the one who has, who has the ball in his hands most of the time, and there are, there are a number of other ways just scoring and assisting to uh, affect a game, and plays like that do it for you. Ben Air did a nice job on the steal, but Utah Valley cannot convert. Three minutes gone here, second half. Here's a long three outside, missed from Provost. Gettys Robinson pulls down yet another board. He's got nine rebounds and 11 points. Earlier this season, Gettys Robinson was one of the nation's leaders as far as double doubles go. What about 10 straight games with a double double? Isaiah Williams spins, shot blocked. Going to call a foul. I look like Mason had the block on him. But it'll be a two-shot foul. Isaiah Williams yeah, Isaiah, at the line. Isaiah had a lot of running on this play. As we see the finish here, you see the spin, and then the foul definitely coming over and gets called. But Isaiah came off a double screen, got the ball, kind of kept going around in, in, in a movement there. And a nice job of uh, reading the defender there and doing that spin move. Isaiah Williams now 14 points. He is the second best free throw shooter on the team. 83% for most teams, he'd be the leader. He just happens to play with Holton Hunsaker, who's the third best free throw shooter in the nation. Second free throw, Isaiah Good. 42 to 28. Wolverines looking for 13 in a row. Urbanis, short. Ben Air pulls in his sixth board. Isaiah working against Provost. Gives it back over to Hunsaker. Yeah, Wolverines are running these plays, trying to get these post ups or get their guards with movement around the outside. That time, Hunsaker trying to go around Urbanis. Vanis slipped down, going to be called for the foul. As Holton went around him. 
Just under 16 minutes to play. Wolverines out in front by 14 points. Coach Ryan Marks in front of us was hoping or thinking that that was going to be called an offensive foul, but a good call there, defensive uh, defensive foul. I have to allow the offense uh, room to make the root, room to make the move there. Utah Valley yet to make a basket here in the second half. They are 0 for 3 from the floor, but from the free throw line, they've made five out of six here in the second half. And that's the fifth team foul already against Texas Pan American. A tough shot there too. Urbanus looks like, you know, on the on the move through there from Holden got hit in the hit in the mouth, hit in the head. It looked like there. Wolverine basketball. They lead it by 14 points. Four four minutes gone here. Second half. Yeah, Ryan Marks uh, right here in front of us. Extremely animated and a little upset. Meanwhile, Coach Dick Hunsaker, very calm and collected. In fact, Coach Ryan Marks has now called a couple of officials over and wants a, an explanation as to what in the world's going on there. The uh, the officials just look at the replay that we showed you with Holton Hunsaker going around Urbanus. And they didn't change the call, and I think that's probably what Ryan Marks is most upset about. Yeah, I think what he thinks there, and you know, we saw him motion several times that he thought that Holton Hunsaker swung his arms through, or you know, probably intentionally swung his arms through, and thought that there should have been a foul call there, but you know, there was no intention there whatsoever from Holton. It's just making a move. Isaiah. Gives over to Hunsaker. Over to Keith Thompson. Back to Williams. To Hunsaker. 15 seconds on the shot clock. Isaiah will take a three. Missed that one. Tipped up by Gettys Robinson. And a Texas Pan American player. And they're going to call the foul on Maury of Texas Pan American. His third. Team's sixth. Six fouls so far in the second half against Texas Pan American. UVU yet to be whistled for a foul. Yeah, once again, Isaiah very aggressive on the offensive rebounds, getting in there, and battling for those rebounds. You see how he has that inside position. I mean, normally the defensive team is the one that has the inside position there, but Isaiah got inside, had that inside position, and Marie was forced to go over the top of him. Well, Holton Hunsaker tried to feed the athletic Keith Thompson for the acrobatic slam. Keith sent that one sailing off into the stands. Oh, that was it was a great try. Oh, it was a great play. Great play run there. Unfortunately there, Keith didn't uh, wasn't able to finish, but well executed except for the finish. Backdoor cut, layup good from Delgado. UVU's lead is 12. Led by as many as 14. A couple of times in this game. An official stumbling and bumbling his way over here to make the call. Foul's going to go against Wiremiller. Yeah, nice job. Holton sees the lane opening there. 
Just see him be very aggressive trying to drive to the basket. You didn't see the replay on the official. He came running over here and tripped over two players on his way here. He about he stayed up though. Yeah, he about had uh, as hard a fall as Holton did there. <laughs> Phenomenal balance. All right, you're about to see the nation's fifth best free throw shooter. Excuse me, third best free throw shooter. Okay, maybe he is now fifth best. Yeah, you're gonna force him to drop the percentage there. Uh, sorry, not mine. Gettys Robinson with a block. Hunsaker for three. Bottom. Yeah, Wolverines are so good when they force those turnovers. That was one of the things that we had looked at coming into the game is when you get that opportunity to force those turnovers. You, know, you get number 12, Nick Wiremiller, going to the basket. He ends up on the ground. An immediate five on four going the other way, and the Wolverines convert. Holton's first points of the game come on the three. And countering back the other way, Texas Pan America. Wire Miller. 14 24 to play. Wolverines by 13. Make it 12. I need a calculator. Hunsaker, jumper outside. Another three. Okay, that's what happens when you miss a free throw. Yep. You get angry and you, yeah. you know. But uh, Holton, Holton is a great three, a great three point shooter. And you see that last shot just when he shot that ball. You could tell he had the confidence that that was going in. I'm not going to tell you how good a three-point shooter he is. All right, I'm not going to jinx his three-pointer. Here's another one. Oh my! And KT was up there, missed the foul. Defense, defense, defense. That was probably the easiest one that he had over there because he was in rhythm, just not able to finish. But you know, he's definitely sparked them here in the second half. So he needs pressure. Is that what you're saying? Well, I don't know if he needs pressure. I think he just needs to go out there and play, which he's done. Delgado misses the reverse. KT with a rebound for UVU. Isaiah will take a dish off. Tried to get it to Ben Air. Ball deflected. Well, the officials missed that one because that ball was clearly deflected, deflected out of bounds, and they're going to give that ball to Pan Am. Uh, that uh, that's a break for Texas Pan Am. See the tempo, the pace picking up here a little bit. I think that's probably what the Bronx want. They want to get that ball. Uh, they're down 15. They're going to have to create more offensive opportunities for themselves, and maybe they do that by picking up the pace. Isaiah went for the steal, missed that one. Provost with it. Weaves his way down. Shot blocked by Keith Thompson. Kenny's Robinson, the whole backcourt move. Just lost Delgado. And now the ball is lost out of bounds. It'll be Utah Valley basketball. Yeah, Keith, we saw that in that last game, and we've seen it his entire career. That's one of those instances where he's not guarding the ball, but he is a great weak side rebounder and a great weak side helper on defense, and that's what happened. He came over there and was able to block that shot off the weak side. Well, we, we missed that jumper, but... 51-33. Wire Miller gives over to Murray. Off the glass, good. Yeah, we're going to see this here coming down the stretch, Jimmy. You're going to see Marie being much more aggressive. You're going to see Provost being much more aggressive. And you know they're going to be active drivers, so they're going to really be trying to, to drive to the basket. Thompson feeds inside Ben Aird. Offensive charge on Big Ben. Ben has had a tough game. Two points, six rebounds, and now two personal fouls. Yeah, this was a flop, too. Just under 12 to play. Wolverines by 16.
Utah Valley University. Your life, your beat, your university. Colton Hensaker, a sophomore, North Salt Lake City, Utah. Six points, two assists, two steals, and three rebounds, and all six points coming from beyond the arc on two of four shooting. Just recently, after he missed his only free throw. Holton Hunsaker, the only player for the Wolverines to have now started every game last year and this year. Sixty straight games. Ball on the floor. Hunsaker comes a thought he came away with it and they called it travel. Oh my goodness. That was that was interesting. Well, we're going to see the replay here. Holton comes up with that ball, and what he does is he throws it out in front of himself. I don't know what, where the official saw Are you saw agreeing it. with an official no, again? No, I'm, I'm not. I'm not <laughs> saying that at all. Watch this. Holton gets the ball. What he does is he throws it out in front of himself. There, there was no travel there. He, he simply threw that ball out. That's where the space was. He didn't even have possession to take enough steps to travel. Pan American That's basketball. Hunsaker comes up with the steal this time. Ben Aaron slapped it away. Yeah, nice slap away from him. And ben. Pan Am took it right away from Holton. Three on two. Urbanis kicks over left side. Flyer Miller. That's a three. 51 38. Coming up on 11 minutes left here. Crowd hasn't had much reason to make a lot of noise because the Wolverines have been out in front for most of the game. Hunsaker misses the NBA three. Loose ball picked up by Urbanis. He'll take the three. Back to back threes. And coach Dick Hunsinger not at all happy with what he just saw from his Wolverines as it's an eight nothing run now for Texas Pan American. A tough stretch there for the Wolverines. They get some shots that probably were a little bit forced. They had the turnover in transition. And that leads to them not getting back in transition. And you know, the last player that you want to leave open for uh, the Bronx is Urbanis, and he makes them pay. We had a direct angle, a good looking shot from the get go. Looking at the Green Man group, one of UVU's trademarks, a group that started last year. They've already gained enough notoriety that the Utah Jazz have asked them to come up a couple of times this season and perform. They can do all sorts of stuff. They've even got a slam dunk group. They all play the drums and do all sorts of green man group type things. I don't know who any of those guys are. It's a sensation. And that adds <laughs> to the aura of it because you don't know who they are, right? It's a sensation. They're behind, uh, they're, they're the men behind the masks there. You don't know who they are. They, they've got the sunglasses. They've got the ability to perform. It's, yeah, they're loving life because they know no matter what they do, nobody knows who they are. Fifty-one forty-one, just a ten-point lead now for Utah Valley. They have led by as many as eighteen. That was when it was fifty-one thirty-three before. Texas Pan American went on this eight nothing run. Yeah, and look at this pressure here, Jim. I mean, we see that when teams make runs, when they're able to get themselves back in the game, they feel like they have momentum. They're going to do something a little bit different and switch it up. And, and they've decided that they're going to extend this pressure. They're going to try and get the Wolverines in a, into a tough situation. Going to back it off here a little bit, but you know, it almost caused it and got them an opportunity off of a turnover. Yeah, Wolverines just shooting 30% here in the second half. They shot 46% in the first half. Meanwhile, Texas Pan American 45% in the second half. Isaiah backs in. Ball slapped away, out of bounds, and they're going to call a foul. Texas Pan American players. I think the official has his choice. They'll call it a wire mill. It seems like tonight we're seeing more of a post-up game from Isaiah Williams than we have previously. I mean, we see a lot of times that it plays a run for him to post up, but I think he's been very aggressive tonight in making that a point that he's trying to do is, is that post-up game. Wire Miller picks up his third foul. It is the eighth team foul against Texas Pan American. Comes with 10 minutes, 20 seconds left. Isaiah stops that eight-nothing run with the free throw. Isaiah now 19 points. 
first game between these two, Isaiah Williams had 21. Leading scorer for UBU in that game. The second one is also good. Well, the three just clanged off the backboard. Gettys Robinson there to get the credit for the rebound. Long three-point shot there from Wire Miller. There was a screen coming up top. Isaiah tried to go went under that screen. Wire Miller took too long of a three-point shot there. Urbanis to Marie for the layup. It's just a 10 point yeah. lead for Utah Valley. Yeah, Bronx hanging tough here. We knew they would. The second place team in the conference playing very well. We knew that that's what they were going to do, and uh, well, they're hanging tough here. Kevin Woods with it. Eight seconds to shoot. Shot won't go. Kevin gets it back up and in. Well, when that shot clock is winding down, you need someone on your team who can create a, you know, create the last second shot there. You know, that's exactly what Kevin Woods did there, realized that the shot clock winding down created his own offense like we saw Isaiah in the, in the first half. Get your shot off. If you don't make it, you get the rebound and go right back up. Woods has six points. Now Ben Aird has seven rebounds. UBU. 845 to play. Wolverines out front by 12. Ben Aired inside. Finally gets a shot to go down. He's just two of six from the floor. He's had a tough evening. Four points for the Big Ben. Yeah, and Ruben Cabrera there didn't see exactly what happened, but he ended up on the ground and Ben was just wide open. The rotation forced to come over. No chance to stop it as it was late. Around jumper is good off the glass from Cabrera. Cabrera, 6'7 junior. That was a nice touch shot there. He got the ball, made a quick move, a step back there. Really nice shot off the glass. UBU's lead is 12. Isaiah gets tangled up with Wire Miller, and Wire Miller is going to be called for his fourth personal foul. Shakes his head, says, no, I didn't do that. Just under eight minutes to play. Wolverines by 12. Dawn is breaking at Utah Valley University. 33,000 students are descending on campus. What are they after? Knowledge? Opportunity? They might be pursuing an MBA, an automotive certificate or a bachelor's degree in philosophy. But despite their different paths, they share a common understanding. Think back to when you were a child. What did you dream of becoming as an adult? A pilot? A teacher? A nurse? Maybe a mathematician? A mechanic? or a scientist. Now imagine a place where everyone is focused on your success. Imagine an education that is personal, engaging, fun, and professional. With an education from UVU, all of this becomes true. Utah Valley University. It's your dream. It's your university. Ben Aird, sophomore from Bountiful, Utah. Just having all sorts of trouble with Bad calls going against him. He does have four points and seven rebounds tonight. And a steal in his 24 minutes of action. Keith Thompson, senior, four points, six rebounds, two block shots, and a steal. KT's been out there for 30 minutes so far. Right now it's 57 45. Wolverines by 12. Just under eight minutes left. Yeah, we look at the stat sheet here, Jim. You've got the Wolverines with 37 rebounds. You know, out rebounding Pan American by by four, excuse me, by 20 as they only have 17. But of those 37, 14 offensive rebounds and continuing with that theme that we saw in the first half, Wolverines do have set, uh, excuse me, 21 second chance points. Isaiah Williams, 21 points tonight. He's perfect six of six from the strike. 
make it seven of seven. Twenty two. He's trying to break through to lead the conference in scoring again. He trails Isaiah Wilkerson of NJIT by just half a point a game. Isaiah would need about 30 some tonight to really take the lead. Right now he's got 22. Seven and a half minutes to play. Kevin Woods jumps up and knocks that one away. Yeah, spectacular play there. He was there was a high low game there and he was guarding number 20 Earl Jefferson who the pass was intended for but you know, nice job of Kevin of staying around front there not allowing the ball to get over top of it. Wolverines tried to run the backdoor play to Hubbard coming across from left to right. Hubbard couldn't grab the handle on the ball so it will belong to Texas Pan Am American. 59 45 Wolverines by 14. Seven and change left here at the UCCU Center. Wolverines looking on uh, 13 wins in a row and clinching the conference regular season championship, looking for win number 20 on the season. And so it'll be the first time in five years that they have won 20 or more games. Provost. Wow. Got it to go, and Isaiah matted himself. Isaiah's going to get the foul. Just under seven to play. Yeah, I thought that was pretty good. A pretty good defense here from Isaiah. I don't know. That's. Uh, I mean, they call it a foul. This will be a better angle there. The official was motioning that he got. It looks like maybe he got him there a little bit with the lower body, but heck of a play there from Provost as he's you know, falling away from the basket after getting fouled and, and makes the shot. Provost has ten points now, falling the free throw. Wolverines lead is down to eleven. Yeah, this gets to that point where if you're Pan American, you realize, okay, we're, we're getting to that point where we've got to make a final run. So you know, our defense is going to be going to have to be much more aggressive, and uh, our offense is going to have to be much more crisp. Nice feed from Ben Aaron to Gettys Robinson. And yeah, just as I say that, the Wolverines go to their bread and butter inside. And a great pass, great dump off there as Ben Aaron, the double team came over, realized it quickly, and made the pass easy pass to Gettys. Inside drive and a whistle. Foul's going to go against the Wolverines. That one's going to go against Gettys Robinson. For Gettys, his second and the team's third of the half. Wow. He was trying to let him go, I think. Yeah. Now, there's that aggressiveness and driving nature of uh, Provost. So here's Provost, their best free throw shooter. Hey. Evidently, I have some sort of Jedi powers. Funny how that works, huh? <laughs> Always seems to go that way. It works for both teams. Yeah, your wish is whatever, uh, you know, whatever you want it to be, and it eventually happens. Wow, I am for rent. Rent and Provost. Ten points tonight. He's now six of seven from the free throw line. 61-49. With 6.20. Isaiah Williams out there with three personal fouls. This is the jumper. Gettys Robinson tracks down another rebound. The guy's a beast. He He's just, amazing. He just grabs it in crowds. I mean, that, that's really what happens on a lot of his rebounds is there's crowds, and he's the one that comes away with it. He's got 13 points and 13 rebounds. And if you've been with, a, with us throughout the season, we've talked about the fact maybe being from the Bronx in New York as taught Gettys, you know, just go get the ball. And go score it just like that. 63-49. 15 points for the senior. Season high, just 18 for Gettys. Well, he's closing in on a season high. Hanging jumper inside from Cleveland will not go. He'll shoot two as he was fouled by Gettys Robinson, really. Yeah, I see Gettys, you know, the, in the very last minute watching, he hits the elbow. You know, if his hands were straight up that entire time, probably wouldn't be called for the foul. But when the officials see that, when you have your hands straight up and at the very last minute or any point of the shot, you bring your arms down at to any type of angle, they're going to call a foul. It's exactly what happened there. Keith Thompson, Kevin Woods go out. Holton Hunsaker and Ben Aird come back in for the Wolverines. Five and a half minutes left. Wolverines leading by 14. 
And they've led by as many as 18. Texas Pan Am's only lead was two a couple of times in that first half. with the lead here. They're going to look to milk that clock on every possession. You won't see any four shots. You won't see any early shots. Uh, you were saying? <laughs> well, <laughs> I stand corrected because there was 15 seconds on the shot clock. But you know what? If you've got a good shot, take it, I guess. So Holton's got eight points. Thank you for correcting me. Oh, I didn't. Holton did. Yeah, that's true. Off the glass, no good. Hunsaker battling for the rebound. Here comes the Wolverines, three on three. Isaiah will back it up, wait for the teammates. Yeah, you're and a technical, technical foul has just been called on Coach Ryan Marks of Texas Pan American. He's pretty hot. He was upset on that rebound that Holton Hunsaker and Aaron Urbanis both went after that no foul was called. Yeah, and, you, and he you, said something. It got lit up for a technical. Yeah, you're going to get a replay here. You know, we got Dwayne Allen, a very senior official and a very experienced official. He's going to go back and ask for a replay here of what happened on the rebound there, where you have Holton Hunsaker falling on the ground and Aaron Urbanis falling on the ground as well. I think Ryan Marks thinks that there was some contact there between the, between the players that. Obviously wasn't in his favor, so we're going to get a replay here. And here's the the replay. The officials are looking at this replay that you're seeing, folks. They're seeing the same thing you are. Yeah, this will be the angle. It's going to be after it too. Yeah, see, he does get hit in the head, but I don't think that was anything. I don't the, think that the was kick it. in the face. Yeah, he was rolling over. I mean, it, he was. We're going to get an, ex an explanation. So the official is going to call Ryan Marks. One official goes to talk to Dick Hunsinger. The other official goes to talk to Ryan Marks. Yeah, that's exactly what I, I just listened to what Dwayne Allen was saying. He said he did get hit in the face, basically, but as he was rolling over. You know, watch this. Holton's going to hit him with the left leg, but it's as he's rolling over. Uh, I don't think there was anything official. You see Holton, if you see at the very end of that, his head is looking forward. He's looking up court there. So yeah, he was definitely just rolling over, and the incidental contact happened. Four forty two to play. The Wolverines are leading sixty five to forty nine. They're still talking about the kick in the head over here to coach Ryan Marks. Now they're calling both head coaches to center court. There they are at center court talking to the officials. I think they're going to both. Are they going to show them the replay or what? They're just going to be discussing the issues here. Ryan Marks doing most of the talking. <laughs> he doesn't well, like to see his point guard, Aaron Urbanus, kicked in the head. Well, and, and who can blame him? Yeah, and it but stems I, it stems back to that also that, that previous possession on the wing where Holton and Urbanus were involved in some contact as Holton was swinging the ball through and got elbowed or hit in the face. And and I think he's he's kind of boiling over at that point because he's thinking there was this contact that happened that you know, that shouldn't have been happening. Something should have been called. But in both instances, there, there was nothing intentional, in my opinion. I, I didn't see any, any intentional you know, harm intended from from Holden Hunsaker in any way. All right, one more look at it. This is what they're talking about. Was this intentional? Was this a foul? Or? Well, and I, I see that. I see the replay there, and Holton can't even. He's not even looking back. His his head and his eyes are looking forward. So I, I don't know if he you know, there's no way he knew that he was going to kick him or hit him. All right the official is going to come explain it to you Matt. Would you listen to him. All right now maybe our fans could hear him at home. What did he say. Well he said that there was unsporting. Unsports, yeah basically unsportsmanlike so you're going to get two free throws there. Holton just took those two free throws and it's going to be possession for the Wolverines because they had it when that technical foul was called. So it's going to be you know point of contact basically he said so you know, just the inbounds right there. All right 66 49 Wolverines by 17 with four and a half left here at the UCCU Center. The Wolverines just four and a half minutes away from claiming their second consecutive 
Great West Conference regular season title. They didn't win the tournament last year. They were upset here on their home floor. Hunsaker for three. That one won't go. Texas Pan American comes away with a rebound. Maury. Isaiah Williams now with those 22 points has now scored 1,000 points in his career. Quite a milestone. That's very impressive. Well, you know, they've had plenty of time to stop this game and do that. They could have done it during that all that stuff and give him the game ball. Yeah, something. right there, right? <laughs> you know, one thing that we'll see, I would imagine, going forward here is we've had this, you know, back and forth. We're, we're going to see the game called probably pretty tight for the last four minutes because they don't want any further any further incidences to, to occur on the court. You know, nice job there. You see how, how tall Ben makes himself with his arms going straight up. He does leave his feet there as well. His third person. Gettys Robinson with three fouls. Ben Aird with three. Isaiah Williams with three. And they're all out there. Oh, man, the turnover there from the Wolverines. Very unusual. Never seen that from Holton before as the ball was coming in. Maybe just took his eyes off it briefly and bounced off his shoulder out of bounds. 12 turnovers for Utah Valley, just 10 for Texas Pan America. Both teams had four at it in the first half. Four minutes left. The Marines by 15. Robos gives over to Urbanus. Isaiah Williams on the guard. Urbanus hanging jumper. Missed it. Ben Air. Eight rebounds now. Little Reigns can burn a little clock here. Yeah, this is where they really go for motion. You'll see a lot of this action, you know, this far away from the from the basket. Just trying to get catches, keep the ball safe, don't turn it over. Just trying to run that clock down. Now last time you said that. The last time I said that, Holden <laughs> made me eat my words, so. That's right. Ten seconds to shoot. Isaiah will do it. Senior can't get that one. Marie pulled down the rebound. Lead pass ahead to Cleveland. It will count. He was fouled from behind. 3.08 to play. And I don't know. This one's getting a little tighter than a lot of folks around here thought it was going to be. Ben Aaron picks up foul number four. I'm Joe Luce, an anthropology student at UVU, and this is my classroom. At UVU, I'm sharpening my mind and my skills. Garcia, a geology student at UVU, and this is Engaged Learning. At UVU, I'm learning by doing. Well, despite the fact that UVU hasn't scored a basket from the floor now in almost three minutes, they still have the lead, 66-53. Thanks to rebounding, it's a 41 to 19 advantage on the boards for UVU. And I'm sure you're impressed with the offensive rebounds for UVU. Yeah, you always like to see 15, that because yeah. it you know, just shows that you're aware of what's going on. You know, it's so easy that once a shot goes up to relax and say, okay, the play's over, whether we make it or miss it. But, you know, when you're still active, when you're still in the game, you're still getting that many offensive rebounds. That's a great sign for a coach. At the free throw line, Cleveland misses it. Keith Thompson back in there with yep. his rebound. And this is what I was expecting to see. Coach Marks is, is referencing and saying, hey, let's put some pressure on the backcourt. 
let's uh, let's extend our pressure. We've got to we've got to try and get some turnovers and some baskets here. Wire Miller has just fouled out of the game. That one was inadvertent as he was trying to put a little too much pressure on Holton Hunsaker. So Wire Miller's done. Nick Wire Miller, six points, one assist to show for his evening of work. Holton Hunsaker at the free throw line for tonight. I should say. He's now two of four. You know, a point should be made is we're going to see the replay of Wire Miller Holton. Look at that, just reading the defender, you know, seeing that he's going to, going to be coming from behind there and just kind of slows up a little bit and causes Wire Miller to, put the, to get the foul. Wolverines by 14. 248 left. And immediately after that jumper from Jefferson, Coach Ryan Marks jumped up and was screaming, timeout, timeout, timeout. Yeah, two minutes, 45 seconds left here, Jim. He's probably going to try and insert some type of press. So, you know, whether it be a zone or whether it be a man, and just saying, hey guys, we got to go for steals, we got to go for, you know, risks that we wouldn't normally take because we're down 12 points and this is, we only have less than three minutes to do it. Coach Dick Hunsaker in his 10th season here at UVU. You see Pan America setting up for that uh, for that pressure. The Wolverines make sure obviously you take care of the ball. First thing is to get the ball in bounds. Once you get it in, if you're going to be trapped, take care of that ball, be strong with it, and stay out of the corner, stay out of your vulnerable areas. Two minutes, 35 seconds left now here at the UCCU Center. Wolverines out, 67-55. Keith Thompson driving, stopped away by Jefferson. Yeah, and the key here too is, you know, we talked about how they're going to try and run the clock, and you know, you can't just bleed the clock out. You still have to be aggressive. Uh, and the nice job there of Keith being aggressive. You, you want to run as much time as you can. I'm going to get an offensive foul call on Ben Aird there. Wow. Pushing off on the inbounds play. Well, guess what? Big Ben has just fouled out of this game. Two minutes, 25 seconds left. This thing's not over yet. Ben Aird, only the second time this season he's fouled out of a game. He leaves with four points and eight rebounds. Two of six shooting from the floor for Big Ben. Ben on the road trip to the two teams in Texas and then again at NJIT in Chicago. During that stretch, he put up career high numbers. Three games. Tough time at home tonight for the sophomore. Well, let's see what's going to happen here in the last 220. Wolverines leading by only 12. Cleveland flushes it. And another timeout from Ryan Martins. Ten point game here. Well, nice job of the Wolverines not fouling there, at least trying to well, you know, avoid the three point possibility. But pretty easy play there as Provost was able to drive the left side of the court. Everyone zeroes in and focuses in on him. You saw Gettys Robinson, who was behind him, looking at Keith Thompson like, why didn't you foul him? Because yeah. I've already got three. You don't have any. Yeah, he almost travels there. Cleveland, he, you know, looked like he was going to go up. Kind of changed his mind and did keep one foot on the ground there. But you're going to see this press. You're going to see this uh, extended pressure, this trapping here from the Bronx. Now the good news is, is that you've got, you know, three really good ball handlers for the Wolverines. You've got Holton Hunsaker, Isaiah Williams, and Kevin Woods in the game, and you know, even Alfonso Hubbard and Keith Hitt, Keith Thompson can handle the ball. But you know, three really, really good, def, uh, good ball handlers. Oh. And again, got it into Holton. Tried to get it right back to Fonz, and Fonz was standing on the end line when he touched the ball. Turnover, Wolverines. 
these Brocks won't go away. Yeah, Holton gets the ball there, falling down. Alfonso wasn't able to get himself back in bounds there, but you see how close Holton is to that baseline. There was virtually no room for him to operate or no room for him to go there. You know, it was a little bit handcuffed there, had no option, but as he was falling down, trying to throw that ball back. Marie. Now to Urbanus. He'll go in the lane, dish off, stolen away. Gettys Robinson comes away with the steal. Hunsaker bumped from behind by Urbanus. Clock stop with 153 left. That'll put Holton Hunsaker at the line. Yeah, there Second was foul a, against Urbanus. Quite a collision there between Gettys Robinson and I believe it was Cleveland there. If we saw we kind of had a poor angle, but Cleveland ended up on the ground. Quite a collision there. Holton Hunsaker very uncharacteristic. Just two of five from the free throw line tonight. Two of six. This is his worst game from the free throw line. And I just wonder if that right shoulder that he injured earlier this season didn't get banged on one of the times tonight where he's hit the deck hard. Yeah, very unusual to see him uh, miss miss this many free throws, but you know, he's going to have the confidence to go back and make the next one. Nice job there of getting at least one of two. Wolverines by 11. Under two minutes left now. Marie won't go. Gettys Robinson pulls down rebound number 15. And a whistle in the backcourt. Urbanus picks up number three. This might be the strategy that the Bronx are going to employ here for the last little bit. Going to see the, the foul here. Nice pump fake there. Ball fake from Kevin Woods and Urbanus coming up. We've got a minute 43 left, so look for the Bronx probably going to try that strategy of just fouling the rest of the way out, putting the Wolverines at the free throw line where they haven't had their best night as a team. And that is Kevin Woods' first miss on the season. He was four for four for that miss. So this night not being kind to the Wolverines from the free throw line. Missed them both. Keith Thompson skied for the rebound, hits the deck hard, and they call travel. Wow. A minute 41 left. Wolverines by 11. Yeah, be aware of the threes here. I mean, you've got to make up points, so be aware of these long three point shots. And Isaiah Williams called for the hand check foul. That's number four on Isaiah. Ben Aird has already fouled out of the game. Now Isaiah's got four. Gettys Robinson out there with three. At this pace, this last minute, 33 for the could to go on for a while here. Provost misses it. Keith Thompson tracks down the loose ball rebound. And in the backcourt, another foul. This one's going to go against Provost. His second. That's going to be a free throw shooting competition, yep. it looks like, from here on out. Obviously, the Wolverines won't want to foul. Texas Pan American will want to foul. So it's key for the Wolverines get their best free throw shooters at the line and knock them down. 68-57. Isaiah Williams, seven of seven from the strike. Make it eight for eight. He's got 23 points tonight. 1,001 points in his career. Got them both. Wolverines 13 point lead it feels a lot closer than that. Urbanus misses from outside. Wolverines pull it down. With a minute 10 left and another foul in the backcourt. That one on Urbanus. Urbanus smiling kind of like he didn't really mean to. Yeah, I think he's probably a little bit surprised at uh, some of the fouls that have been called. You know, he's had a rough night, got elbowed in the face, got kicked in the face. <laughs> 
all you can do at that point is smile. Well, I'm glad the kid's smiling. Tough boy. Aaron Hernandez, junior from Austin, Texas. Isaiah free throw, bouncing all over the place and finally dropping through good. 25 points for the senior out of Chicago, Illinois, here on senior night. Last home game of the regular season for Utah Valley. Second one also good. Twenty six his career high is thirty five. Don't think he's going to get that unless they shoot a whole lot of free throws in the next minute and two. Ball kicked out of bounds. Provost trying to drive in and dish it off. It'll belong to Texas Pan Am. Looking like the Wolverines are going to come away with the victory here. You're calling this? Uh, 72 57. Yeah, a minute left. I, I think the Wolverines will. As long as they can just secure this next rebound and get foul, maybe the Bronx won't actually foul, but as long as they can just keep going to the free throw line and making their free throws, they'll be in good shape. Urbanis didn't get it to go, but Cleveland was there to grab it and put it in, and he was fouled. That one's going to be called against Keith Thompson. Just under a minute left. You know, I made the point back after there was that you know altercation. I don't remember how many I think there was what four minutes four and a half minutes left and, and I had stated that we're going to see a closer game call. We certainly have seen that you know, calls are being made that normally would not have been called in the first half or in the first part of the second half. You know a very stark change in how the game has been officiated. I think both teams are realizing that. Well down court pass was uh, attempted for Gettys Robinson It went through couple of players hands it was headed toward coach Dick Hunsaker and that rascal reached out and <laughs> tapped the ball back in. He knows it. he's smiling as he talks to the officials. Now the effort the uh, Brian Marks is saying hey that's a technical when the opposing coach touches the ball. But the official says sorry he was out of bounds when he touched it. If he was in bounds when he touches it it is a technical. But the ball was still live, is what yeah, the Texas they've, Pan and they've Am got coaches a point. are calling. That, that ball was still live. I, I don't know what they're saying because he can be out of bounds, but that ball is still live. It hasn't gone out of bounds yet. It's bouncing over the end line. Uh, that, that ball right. was that ball well, was still in bounds. It's Wolverine basketball. Isaiah has it. 72-60. 45 seconds to play. Wolverine's trying to burn out some clock now. That's Ryan Marks telling his players to come out and put some pressure on the Wolverines. Isaiah fouled from behind by Delgado. The clock stop 35.3. That's going to put Isaiah at the free throw line for two. He's got 26 points tonight. Here's the foul. A little reach around foul. So the senior on senior night. Two more free throws. And uh, well, he was perfect. 11 of 11 before that one. 72-60. Isaiah Williams makes the second. Wolverines on their way to their 13th consecutive victory. They will let Brandon Provost go unmolested to the hole for the slam. Isaiah in the backcourt. Provost reaches in to foul him. Stops the clock with 25.4 to play. Well, they haven't given up yet. No, and we've had more fouls in the last three minutes here than we had in the entire game, and probably more than the Wolverines game had on, on Thursday against Houston Baptist. Some of the fans getting on. Coach Ryan Marks of Texas Pan American. Look, 25 seconds left. You're fouling. Your team down by 11. It's it's been done before. Well, I mean, I think you know Provost had good intentions there. He's not really trying to foul, just trying to put some pressure on, create something. But the official saw it otherwise and blew the whistle. Okay, Isaiah's just exhausted from the free throw line now. <laughs> he shot a lot of free throws tonight. That's He's his 14, 13 of 15. 15, yeah. Got 20, uh, 28 points. 
And unmolested once again, Brandon Provost, who's going to have all sorts of points for this one, sir. He's got 15, but most of them have come with UVU just letting him go. Holton Unsager in the backcourt, trying to run off some clock. We'll see if Texas Pan Am calls it off. Yeah, they've called off the dogs. That's how this one's going to end. Wolverines are going to win this one by 10, and that's going to be a lot closer than we thought it was going to be midway through the second half when they were leading by as many as 18 points. Utah Valley University, Great West Conference regular season champs for the second consecutive year. They win it 74-64. They're now 20 and 10 with one regular season game left. They're 14 and 2 here at home. This their last home game. They're 9 and 0 in conference play. We'll take a break. We'll come back and talk to Coach Dick Hunsinger right after this. I'm Sylvia Bentley, an anthropology student at UVU studying ancient Peru, and this is my classroom. At UVU, I'm graduating with a diploma and a resume. Think back to when you were a child. What did you dream of becoming as an adult? A pilot? A teacher? A nurse? Maybe a mathematician? A mechanic? Or a scientist? Now imagine a place where everyone is focused on your success. Imagine an education that is personal, engaging, fun, and professional. With an education from UVU, all of this becomes true. Utah Valley University. It's your dream. It's your university. Back at the UCCU Center, Utah Valley has just claimed their second consecutive Great West Conference regular season championship. This one with a 10 point victory over Texas Pan American Broncos. We're joined courtside by Coach Dick Unsaker. Congratulations, Coach. 20 victories this season. Still got a game to go, but uh, two consecutive Great West Conference championships. Back to back, terrific performance. Thanks, Jim. Real credit to the kids. Good players, and you'll win. Anything you were particularly happy with tonight on senior night? We stuck with the game and we fought, we competed, we had some runs. You know, our, our blemishes show up. <laughs> I, I know, I, I, it, it's, it's, I don't know to say that's who we are, but, if, but again, if we're gonna continue to play what we wanna do and achieve what we wanna do, um, we gotta do better. We, gotta, we can't let our blemishes surface. And, uh, but I thought overall it was a very, very good effort. Um, I thought that, uh, Thompson had a really, really strong weekend, a really good weekend of games here. Uh, Isaiah played well. You know, ben was solid. Holton was, Holton was solid. Holton got a little, gets a little sideways and, and does some silly things at times. He just, he just gets so much into the competitive tilted mode. And, uh, Kevin Woods came in and did a terrific job for us. Haven't played those kind of minutes for a long time. And he did a really nice job on Urbanus, cooled Urbanus down. And, with that being said, stayed in the game and uh, really did a nice job. I, I went with Geddes, uh, senior, and I thought Geddes did show up and play with 16 rebounds. Alfonso Hubbard uh, played long minutes in the first half. In the second half, for some reason, seemed to go back to his regress with his attitude, and consequently he stayed on the bench for extended period, periods of time. And, um, 
you can't let things, you can't, you, you got enough problems playing the opponent without playing yourself and, and different flows like that. But uh, again, overall, it was an outstanding win. Happy for the seniors. The game's all about the seniors. Send them out winners, and we did. And uh, 28 points has been a, a, a conference high for Isaiah Williams this year, that's for sure. And uh, so I'm real happy with the win and, and the congratulations to all the, the players and appreciate the fans, the great support we had this season, the best we've had, great crowd tonight and uh, kind of a crazy game, entertaining, but kind of a game that <laughs> kind of game that I don't know, you, you go in the car and hope you don't have, don't, hope you don't have an accident on the way home. Be careful. <laughs> See ya. Bye. Thank, thank you, Coach. Coach Dick Hunsaker joining us courtside. All right, we'll wait for Matt to join us and go over the final stat sheet. I'll go ahead and give you the final totals for players here while Matt jumps back down. Isaiah Williams, 28 points. Gettys Robinson, 15. They were the leading two scores for Utah Valley. Holton Hunsaker had 11 points. Three UVU players in double figures. Keith Thompson, four points, nine rebounds. Ben Aird, four points, eight rebounds. Kevin Woods, senior night, six points, three rebounds, two assists. Alfonso Hubbard, six points, two rebounds. Uh, Gettys Robinson, a double-double, 15 points and 16 rebounds. Leading score for Texas Pan American, Brandon Provost, with 15 points. Matt Peterson, your final thoughts. Yeah, a pretty good game all around for the Wolverines. And we see the final statistics here. Wolverines 24 of 55 from the field, three-point uh, wise, 38 and a half percent. Did have 15 turnovers. Uh, when you look at the Bronx, 24 of uh, 53 from the field, 33% from the three-point line and 11 turnovers. You know, I'll go back to kind of what we talked about at the very beginning. There's a lot riding on this game, you know, the winning streak, going into the conference tournament. You know, a lot of things happening for the Wolverines. Senior night, you know, that, that to me will stick out more than anything. This, this night was about seeing the seniors. It was senior night, and, and I'm sure the Wolverines are very pleased with the effort that, that they got from – top to bottom on their bench and coaching staff and it was a, it was a good victory and, and it just keeps rolling you know it just seems like the it just keeps getting better and better for the for the Wolverines one regular season game left for Utah Valley on the road a week from today at North Dakota that'll wrap up the regular season then on the road at Chicago uh, for the conference tournament beginning on March 9th that's going to do it for us partner I enjoyed the season it was yeah. a lot of fun yeah, here a lot at home. Of fun. we'll look to forward to next year right it should be yeah <laughs> it should be a fun season next year I think and it surprised a lot of people Thanks for being with us, folks. Wolverines win it by 10. This broadcast was produced by students from the Digital Media Department here at Utah Valley University. This has been a copyrighted production of UVU and the UVU Sports Network. For Matt Peterson, I'm Jim McCullough saying so long from Orem, Utah.